A sequence six is an enzyme uh, that is in the nucleus of every cell, and it is responsible for maintaining um, our DNA packaged in the right way. Um, and when we get older, sirtuin 6 may just um, may not be enough of it to maintain our DNA in good shape. Uh, and by maintaining good shape, I mean that it's not only it helps repair mutations uh, or damage, but also it, it just helps keeping it organized. Because you can imagine DNA is, very, is a very long molecule, right? <laughs> and this is like if you have a, you know, this a thread and it gets all tangled together. So it needs to be very well organized. Uh, and as we get older, like every cycle of cell division, DNA gets unraveled and packaged back together. Or every time a gene is transcribed, again, it's to be opened and put together. So it gets messed up. It, so what sirtuin 6 can do, it can go back and just organize things back together. And SIR-T6 uh, is one of seven sirtuins that protects the cell. And there are three of them that protect uh, things that go on in the nucleus to do with the DNA and the epigenome. And SIR-T6 and SIR-T1 seem to be the most important for that. They repair DNA and they control gene expression, uh, as well as other things like retrotransposons, these hitchhikers in our genome. Uh, but SIR-T6 seems to be the most potent slash important because when you turn it on or give extra copies in mice, you get a robust lifespan extension. SIR-T1 hasn't been as successful. Shin Imai at Wash U has shown that SIR-T1 in the brain uh, can extend lifespan, but the transgenic didn't seem to extend lifespan and for reasons that we think have to do with the pituitary. But long story short, the, the SIR-T6 is exciting. We've, we're working on molecules that activate SIR-T6. I, I have a startup company with John Denou and Lenny Garenti working on that. Um, and so it's it's super exciting. I know Chaim has a similar company. And if we could activate SIR-T6, we could improve metabolism, downregulate hyperinflammation, uh, and even treat cancer, we think. Uh, in fact, the SIR-T6 gene that we've been working on for many years and first worked on in yeast cells in the 1990s uh, is a major suppressor of, of retrotransposons during aging. And that if you delete the gene for SIR-T6, those mice go through rapid aging, uh, ostensibly because those hellhounds have been released from the genome. And uh, so it does fit into the th my theory of aging. The epigenetic theory of aging says that as, the, as epigenetic information is lost, in other words, the structure of the three-dimensional nucleus is lost, part of the problem is that genes come on when they shouldn't. And that's not just genes that specify vision and neuronal function. It also allows retrotransposons to be transcribed and multiply and leak out into the cytoplasm where they cause inflammation. Um, so it's a perfect part of uh, a perfect example of how the information theory of aging uh, includes and seems to explain um, many, if not all, of the observations over the last uh, few decades in the field of aging. David Sinclair says CERT6, or CERT-T6 as he calls it, is the most important longevity gene. Because when you activate it, it gives a robust life extension. Um, it assists with metabolism, down-regulates hyperinflammation, and even treats cancer. Uh, we've got Dr. Michael Kaufman. He spoke about Heim Cohen's work and saying that CERT-6 is the most powerful longevity gene. More CERT-6 keeps your body more happy. Uh, and it also then doesn't matter what else you're doing in your life because CERT-6 impacts it, you know. I think that in the mouse trial, they basically gave them the McDonald's diet, um, and the mice with, that took Cert 6 were still equally as healthy. So, um, Ner Barzilai, he spoke about Cert 6 being even more important in humans than in mice, unlike many other longevity pathways. It maintains your telomeres, prevents inflammation. Um, animals with no Cert 6 die within a day or two. Human centenarians, people that are over 100 years old and healthy, they have very high levels of CERT6. They have less Alzheimer's, they have less cancer. You know, what can people do right now to live to 120? Take CERT6 Activator. You know, the top researcher on all of this is Professor Vera Gorbanova, and she's leading our research, so we're very lucky. Yeah, 
and we found the seaweed. Uh, and the compound in seaweed is called fucoidin, uh, a very potent activator of sirtuin 6. Uh, it is found in brown seaweed. And uh, people that consume a lot of seaweed, uh, you know, the countries that consume a lot of seaweed would be Japan, South Korea. And these are countries with the highest life expectancy. Uh, so we collaborated with the laboratory of Yusin Su, uh, who was sequencing genomes of centenarians, and we looked whether there are any mutations in this gene CERT6 uh, that would be more common in centenarians. Uh, and we found two mutations in the C-terminus of CERT6 protein in about the same region where we had differences between mouse and beaver. So we took those two mutations, uh, we engineered them, we tested how they affect the function of CERT6. Uh, and this is a DNA repair assay. Uh, we compare, so this would be the wild type CERT6, like all of us in this audience have. And this is CERT6 from centenarians. So it was better at inducing DNA repair. So that makes sense, right? So better DNA repair, longer life. Uh, it was also better at maintaining heterochromatin, so and CERT6 keeps them silent. So we m compared uh, wild-type CERT6 and centenarian CERT6, and how good are they at keeping line one element silent, and centenarian was better. So it was better in these two different functions that are very much linked to longevity, and the way it was achieving that uh, was by binding to another very interesting protein called lamin A, uh, Juan Carlos mentioned lamin A in yesterday's talk. So this is a very important protein in maintaining the structure of the nucleus, which would be the structure of that sock drawer. Uh, and here CERT6 binds to it, and the centenarian one binds more tightly and helps them maintain the whole structure more efficiently. So we still come to the same, the same idea of maintaining epigenome. Uh, so It's not only talking the talk, it's walking the walk. You know, I have this centenarian study. We have 750 uh, centenarians and their families. And we found functional mutation in, in uh, the 36 gene that for me completed the story from mice to humans. So uh, this is another reason why I think that this is going to be very relevant to humans. The mouse trial is already completed. Incredible results. That's being published September of 2023. So stay, uh, you know, keep your eyes open for our emails. We'll, we'll, we'll link to that study in those. Uh, it vastly, so it showed that CERT6 activator vastly extended lifespan. There's less disease, etc. And the trial actually lasted a lot longer than we would planned because the mouse taking uh, CERT6 activator lived for so long. In fact, I think one of them is still alive. At some point, you just have to end the study. But on the on the mouse trial, so essentially we took old mice, divided them into two groups. First group given CERT6 activator in their food. The second group, the control group, was given sort of regular mouse chow. After a, a few months on this diet, both groups of mice were given sort of health checkups. We refer to it as a frailty score. Now, the frailty score measures things like grip strength, walking speed, gait, eye condition, hair condition, how alert they are. There's quite a few different things that it measures. And what that does is it then calculates like an aggregate score. And that aggregate score is their frailty score. So the higher the score, the more frail the mouse is. So the lower the score, the better, right? The mice that received CERT6 activator had, had significantly lower frailty scores. And it was so astounding, the difference that Professor Gorbanova said, you know, we, we have to get this in human trials right now. We went about it straight away. Um, I was leaning on Professor Gorbanova for ideas and because you know at the moment you can't do a study where you just kind of say oh this will make people younger you know you have to have a particular outcome right and because of what we saw in the mice in terms of tumors we are now doing a, a randomized placebo controlled clinical trial in humans where we give them CERT6 activator to, to elderly patients that have been uh, through chemotherapy mm -hmm. then we can also measure their frailty score their biological age but more importantly it's their recurrence of cancer. 
So we believe that the group taking CERT6 activator will have a better frailty score, a lower biological age, and again, importantly, uh, less frequent recurrence of cancer and less aggressive. So as you can imagine, we're, we're very, very excited about this. It will take many, many years. It's not like the mouse trial where we can get that wrapped up within a year or so. This is humans, so it's, it's going to take a, a long time. Uh, and the, we in the laboratory tested different batches of seaweed because if you just, you know, buy seaweed, it would be from different uh, oceans and uh, different locations. So they are not all the same. Uh, and uh, from, you know, if you take 10 batches, maybe three of them will have a strong activating uh, activity. So we tested in the laboratory, we find that some of the batches have stronger activation. Um, so we, we don't yet know exactly what determines it, you know, maybe really conditions under which this seaweed was growing, how much sunlight it was getting. Every batch is sent for testing to check CERT6 monoribosylation mono activity. And this is done at the Rochester Aging Research Center, which is in New York State in the USA. So uh, Fucoidin in general, you know, it's possible to buy it as a supplement. Um, but of course, in that case, you still don't know if that will be a good activator or not. So uh, we collaborate with the uh, supplement uh, pro longevity company, Do Not Age, and uh, we test for them batches of seaweed. So you can buy from them CERT6 activator that we tested, you know, we don't test like it every day, but they send us a sample from every new lot that they get and we test it, activate CERT6. In this yep. case, you can get a product that's been verified. <laughs> so the dosage guidance that we give is weight dependent. So most people take either two or four capsules per day and it should be taken close to a meal time. But having said that, something is better than nothing. And daily use is better than perfectly timed use that is inconsistent. So provided you take it every single day, you will get the benefits.